Hi! Welcome to this part of my review featuring the Eventide role-playing game. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review featuring this survival horror post-apocalypse experience that you can play with a group or by yourself or as a co-op experience because of the included solo rules and the apocalypse toolkit, please check out the playlist in the description below. Before we begin, I want to talk about the channel's sponsor, Heroes and Hardships. This is a universal RPG system to handle any sort of story, any sort of adventure, any sort of theme. It contains hundreds of tools to accomplish that. The Kickstarter is about to begin. I'm going to put a couple of links in the description to the Kickstarter that is, like I said, about to get started and to the website. I am also going to put links to my reviews of the Quick Start Guide and the Wallace campaign setting featuring the exploits and life of William Wallace. Now back to the review. This time I am going to talk about the solo system, the apocalypse toolkit, and I'm going to give you my final thoughts on this post-apocalypse game. The solo rules are perfect. They are simple, easy to understand. They are not as layered or complex when compared to other solo systems, but you have an introduction to what solo gaming is. It is brief and to the point. To play the solo version of this game, you only need a journal in addition to the other things required for play, that is, this book, dice. This journal could be physical or digital. It could be a notebook, or it could be your favorite word processor on your computer, it could be anything. You are going to be keeping track of the events, the adventures and misadventures that you experience while traversing the wastelands. This also means that it works as a sort of saving mechanism, to put it in video game terms. The solo system can be used to play Eventide as a co-op experience, that is, playing without a game master with your friends. You have a series of prompts to shape anything in your solo adventure or campaign. For example, what about you? That is, me. Who am I? What are my beliefs? This refers to your player character, of course. You also have what? What is my task? What is the complication making it a challenge? Then there is who. Who is involved? Who will be an obstacle? You have when. When did this happen? You have where. Where am I now? In addition to that, you have a categorization of the different tasks or post-apocalypse quests that you can undertake. Maybe it's an escort mission. Maybe it's about survival, it's about healing, gathering, maybe you need to deliver something. You also have information on how to run a solo game in a structured way. So first you have story triggers. These are basically any situation where the outcome is not clear. So you're going to be handling things via checks or tests or by asking a question to the included oracle. So it's very simple. First, you frame the scene, you describe the events, then you have a story trigger, and this could result in an answer provided by the oracle but developed by you, or handling the result or outcome of a particular test. You also have a table to randomly determine the difficulty of different tasks, so that they are unpredictable. So you are building your dice pool, you are rolling those tests, you compare the results, now, when it comes to the oracle, this is a simple table with yes or no answers. The typical no and, no but, yes and, and so forth. So maybe you wanted to frame this starting scene, you are beginning a campaign, and you ask the oracle, does my character start in a civilized area? And maybe you obtain no and, so no, it's not a civilized area, you are in the wilderness of the wastelands, and there is no sign of civilization around. Now you could be thinking that perhaps you were traveling with a caravan, and perhaps you were attacked. So you ask the oracle, was my caravan attacked? And you obtain the result of, yes, just that, yes. So that's why you are there in the middle of nowhere. Your caravan was attacked, 
and you are the only survivor. So as you can see, it also requires for you to develop things and you could be thinking, but this is not enough. I need additional inspiration. And that's why you have the Apocalypse Toolkit, which you can use as a game master when running things for your players to improvise content or to prepare things beforehand, but you can also use it in solo play. Through this toolkit, you will be able to generate random names, such as Alex and Zed. There's also a relationship generator that is going to be quite useful when interacting with non-player characters, perhaps non-player characters from your past, or even between player characters in a co-op or normal situation. Perhaps there is love or lust between two characters, or there is respect, perhaps paranoia. There is also a table to determine the hit location during attacks. Maybe you got shot on the leg. Maybe you managed to cut the torso of your enemy. There is also a random vehicle generator. Maybe you stumble upon a motorbike with a chassis made of bone. It is equipped with side spikes, a rear turret, and a harpoon. You can also determine the weather. Maybe there is scorching heat, or you come upon the dreaded tormenta. There is an NPC demeanor generator as well. Perhaps you encounter someone that is curious, or maybe even angry. There is a random resource table. Maybe you encounter wood, metals, or chemicals. There is also a shortage and surplus table, with results such as water, medicine, transportation. There is a salvage hull table, yielding results of low yield, average yield, high yield. You also have a settlement and tribe generator. This is perfect to create a new tribe or an adventure hub, perhaps. Maybe you enter an average, uninviting theocracy that has stockpiled weapons. You also have the wasteland generator. This is a way of adding areas, adventure sites, points of interest to the map. Perhaps you come upon an abandoned bunker. Maybe you encounter an oasis. Perhaps you find a mysterious sculpture or a gang hideout. Perhaps a tunnel or a burning village. And the document contains a way to divide a particular section of the map by quadrants. You can randomly determine the location of different sites, features, etc. It's all very simple to do. At the end of the book, you have resources such as the character sheet, the tribe sheet, the vehicle sheet, and even pre-generated characters. So what do I think of Eventide? I think this is one of the best post-apocalypse games out there. I think a lot of you will consider it to be the best solo or co-op post-apocalypse RPG. Because it's not too focused on a particular style of post-apocalypse. It's not a gonzo post-apocalypse game or a science fantasy experience, at least not in the conventional sense. Because despite the mutations, the savagery, the strange, abnormal peculiarities of the setting itself, of the land, you still feel as if this could in a very far-fetched way, actually happen in the distant future. I'm not saying that it's very realistic, but the fiction is quite believable. And you have those survival horror elements. There are a lot of disturbing things in this setting. The tribes, the features of the land, the way that the environment itself can destroy you, the acidic ocean that surrounds the continent, the sections of land that are mutated, they are pretty much a living organism known as mother. All of the system is very easy to understand, quite streamlined, and also quite old school at the same time. Your characters do not depend on gimmicks. I like gimmicks in post-apocalypse games, but like I said, this experience is a bit more realistic. You start out as a normal person trying to survive, and depending on your actions, the resources that you gather, 
perhaps the difficulties and triumphs that you go through, your character is going to turn into a very different person throughout the course of your journey, if you manage to survive. Handling weapons, combat, vehicles, it's all fast, smooth, efficient, and considering you have a complete beast theory and a complete solo system with the Apocalypse Toolkit, this game will last you a lifetime. So my highest recommendation for the Eventide role-playing game. And although this is the conclusion for this review, in a few weeks I am going to be reviewing Children of the Fall. This is a role-playing game focused on one of the tribes of the wastelands. So I hope you will watch that as well. Thank you for watching this review. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that have been supporting the channel by sending drive through RPG gift certificates. If anyone else wants to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you, and see you later!